I'd like to welcome you to today's video. It's a real special one for me. I recently was interviewed for a podcast, and on that podcast, I discuss ASMR. The interviewer also made an ASMR documentary, and I really highly suggest you check it out. I'm going to be leaving it in the link right here, and it's also going to be in the description box. So it's an excellent documentary, and my podcast was my audio commentary about the, what I thought of the documentary, my take on ASMR, and so on. So I hope you can enjoy. Here's where it's going to get quiet. We are live, and this is rolling. So welcome. Um, I'm joined with... Uh, as she's, you know, I asked this to everyone in the movie, but I didn't get ask you it before we started. Would you like to be called Cat? Would you like to be called by your YouTube name? How should I address you today? I definitely go by Cat more often than not, so Cat is fine. Um, so this is a soft speaking audio commentary for my documentary, What is ASMR? And Cat, uh, also known as ASMR Kitten on YouTube, uh, is joining me to do that commentary. Very How's happy it going? to be here. So um, I'll, I'll point out one of the great reasons. Obviously, your, your channel is awesome. And uh, well, I, I told people in making this documentary that I lost a lot. of I, this, this movie could have been got done three weeks ago. But when you are researching ASMR people, uh, all of a sudden things slow down when you're watching all of their videos and not really feeling awake. Um, because you're listening to them all day. So I did get to go through almost all of your videos because um, initially I'd asked you to, to speak on it, but I think this is much better. Um, I guess the first thing I wanted to point out that's the most obvious thing is um, I went mostly for people I reached out to. I, for every one email I sent to a female uh, YouTuber, I sent five to a male YouTuber um, simply because there was a prejudice we were fighting against that this was men's, that the whole genre was men sexualizing women. And so I had to find men to be in the documentary. That was very important. Um, you are a woman, I'm guessing, but I yes. don't. I don't know, you know. Um, how, how, how do you feel, A, you know, as a woman in ASMR and, and B, you know, the documentary touching uh, you know, very glaringly obvious that there are only men in it. Um, during the documentary, I was really excited to actually see that there was only men presented because I was almost expecting at least one or two women to be in the documentary, but I was very pleased that it was only men because it's nice to get their perspective and their take on what ASMR is as opposed to like myself, a female, whereas I already kind of know what I think it is. So to get another gender's perspective, it was interesting. Um, did, did, you, uh, did you like that though? Did you think that some female perspective, I mean, obviously we're doing this audio commentary, but did you feel as though the lack of female perspective might have hurt the film in any way? I don't think so at all. I actually, like I said, I really was almost surprised by it, but it was like a good surprise. I was, I actually really enjoyed it. How many, um, you know, how many other ASMR people do you actually uh, interact with on, on a daily or weekly basis? Um, it used to be a lot more than it is now when the community was a bit smaller. I had a, like a Facebook page with like less than 1200 friends on there. So it was more often than not then. But nowadays I'm down to maybe 10 to 20 or so ASMR people that I keep in touch with almost every day or if not every other day. I'm friends with some on Facebook, Instagram, etc. So I have some community members that I do talk to often. And that's I'm guessing purely out of um, necessity to not, you know, it's become too busy, right? Yeah, it definitely has, I don't want to say the word oversaturated, but it really has become such like a market where there's just new people every single day. And I think that's an excellent thing, but at the same time, it's it's tough to keep up with it. It's a very fast, YouTube in general is extremely fast moving, yeah. which I think is one of the great things about making this movie is that, you know, 
honestly, if I were to make a real state of ASMR, I'd have to do it every month because any article you see about ASMR, you know, one of my disappointments was I, I, when researching it, I would see articles written six months ago and it's, it's, you know, six months ago, a year ago, it's so much has changed to where people that they mention are now, you know, so much bigger than just ASMR. And it, it, it's, it's interesting now to see like the fact that social media books are an, an impractical thing to print nowadays because it's, it's moving too quickly. No, exactly. And I was even um, noticing when I was taking notes for this documentary, um, there's so many up and coming forms of media that are presenting ASMR. If you go search on um, Instagram, the hashtag ASMR, I've even started doing it myself, but there's videos of people just doing 50 second ASMR videos and there's Snapchats dedicated to it. I mean, it's becoming a very like underground community on Instagram, but it's still becoming and branching off of what we already have. Yeah. In truth, I probably should have done a, at the same time, if not now, what is ASMR number two uh, with the, with the, tagline visual asmr because that is becoming much more popular in the last few months on on instagram you know the hashtag you know oddly satisfying and things yeah. like that is that is 100 percent visual asmr and is 100 percent you know totally the the visual asmr communities uh, effect on the internet and and now you're seeing videos that you know what the idea that bakers are a category on, on Instagram is, is kind of silly, except for that kneading dough is a, a kind of common ASMR trigger, as I understand. Yeah. And I even follow, I know, like, personally on Instagram, I follow, um, like, painting. People, like, just drawing, like, with paint for, like, 30 seconds. And I love it. It's a nice little shutdown during the day. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of people are, when, when we talk, and We'll get. We'll, uh, we'll start moving into your notes, but I'm I'm curious on a few just basic things uh, to start. You know, I think that a lot of people are surprised the for the uses and for how often um, people use ASMR. And that's you know now that I hear it, like that that Instagram or that Snapchat possibility is something I'm going to start using because I will either use it to calm down or if i you know have a migraine i usually use longer things or sometimes i need quiet focus and no noise can be mind numbing but a little bit of asmr you know i'll read with asmr but the idea i'm even getting tingles thinking about it <laughs> the idea that just like yeah just go on instagram and click on a 50 second asmr and that's it and then do something else that's a that's a hot tip i think <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I use it throughout my day as well. And like, I um, I have a lot of time like in between like work and like home. And I'm able to just sort of like, just go through my feed and see what people are posting. And it's unbelievable while like making coffee in the morning, and just seeing someone like tap on a computer screen or something small like that, how much it can really sort of like almost energize you for the morning and the rest of your day. Um, Let's, let's start with the beginning of the movie in which I sort of talk about the, the history we were, we were talking and doing intros over it. Um, you know, I think the two most controversial history points here are, um, the idea that these really, these two videos are mostly where a lot of the genre in its heyday came from these, this Walt Disney video and, uh, this hockey player, this, this concussion video. Mm -hmm. um, do, do you think that we did a, a good job in sort of presenting those things? Or do you think that people will sort of doubt that as the history? I mean, I honestly personally never heard of that before. Like I didn't know of the hockey video. So I was actually kind of interested because I am a oh. hockey fan. So for myself, it kind of intrigued me to kind of figure out what exactly you were talking about. But I did understand like wow like maybe that really is where it all started one of the great things about this is that it is so strange that you get uh, you know genuine reactions when you tell people about it and one of the fun genuine reactions is i would ask i've been asking for months not just you know talking to my experts but when i would run into someone who was studying medicine or something like that and i go 
hey, you've never heard of a cranial nerve exam, right? And the person would go, no, or they go, oh, yeah, I remember, like, oh, that's the thing. And, and you know, you only re none, nobody has really gotten a cranial nerve exam unless you've been in a massive trauma. Um, yeah. And this hockey player felt as though he, he spent his whole life um, – on the, after he was on the Rangers, sort of saying, like, very ahead of the curve on concussion awareness and that video going public, and it is, I believe he just put it into the public domain, was mm -hmm. uh, a move on him to, uh, you know, create awareness. But if you've ever watched it, there are some people who've looped it for 10 hours. The the male doctor has this very deep voice, and he's, he's very calm. Um, and, and it is the only place on the internet I've seen a cranial nerve exam. Yeah, I mean, I, de I definitely checked it out, like, real quickly. And even just by, like, skimming through it, like, very quickly, it is very borderline ASMR. And I can completely understand, like, why people would loop it and why people would kind of turn to this strange video that kind of almost has nothing to do with what you typically would be searching. Um. And then more interestingly, it's actually very hard, you know, there's sort of, as an animator, I can tell you, there's sort of a secret web of people that will, you know, get you access to uh, some of the more rare Disney movies. I, I for example, have personally seen the uh, Disney film on menstruation um, oh, and some of, the more, some of the more racist films. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, that was a harder one to get was virtual haircut to actually get to, to, to see it. But I don't know if that's one people know either, that virtual haircut was one that people would go to Disneyland and then was sort of in the days of, uh, oh, man, I'm trying to black albino sheep and like all those flashy internet sites. Uh, mm -hmm. they, would try, they would try to replicate. So I'm glad that I managed to teach – you something i figured like i figured most of the asmr creators would think this was like old hat but it was good to that that's amazing to hear that you actually heard it as educational I was very worried that asmr fans would find that would tune out to that part of the yeah and um especially with that i sort of um oh what's the word i'm looking for um i'm losing my thought my apologies um with that whole video, I only had heard of the ASMR community and like ASMR as like a tag on YouTube through sort of like whisper hypnosis videos. So I sort of thought that was sort of where it kind of got its start. I didn't even know there was more or less a community before that. And we can even go back to like the like the 70s and the 80s and talk about Bob Ross. Yeah, you know. Um, we didn't, I touch on it lightly in the movie, but I do have this theory about certain TV shows and I'm not the first to say it, but I, I will often bring it up is that, you know, there are certain shows that I believe are not actually as popular as they should be, but rather that they are ASMR and people don't know it. NPR is one we talk about in the movie. I 100% agree with that, yeah. And uh, Breaking Bad, in my opinion, which is very loud and violent, but for the most part are like a list of things you do as triggers. It's mixing ke chemicals, liquids. There's lots of soft glass noises. Um, Ro uh, Brian Cranston's voice is, is very low and he's yeah. slow and tempered. And then you have all those desert noises. You have sand and tires pulling up quietly on gravel. Uh, in my opinion, Breaking Bad is... 100% because of, of ASMR. Uh, wow, I never looked at it that way, and now I want to like rewatch it. It was one of my absolute favorite shows. Yeah, Kate, I, can't, I don't think there's a lot of reasons to. I'm glad I've given you the current excuse to rewatch Breaking Bad. <laughs> oh, no, now I have to. It's research. It's research. I have to. Oh, I love it. It's for my job. Um, so. Let's let's get into to 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 your initial thoughts on the movie if you if you have any notes on sort of the start because now we're about I think ten or fifteen minutes in. Um, so, what are your opening sort of thoughts on on the movie? So, with the start of everything, I could really sort of agree with overall everything that everybody said, but specifically with the first um, person you interviewed, Justin or Pudding whoever you'd like to call him, I was um, really intrigued by some of his answers and um, I could relate to a lot of the things that he said. So one thing I actually have a couple of stars next to 
is he um, was mentioning how he would get triggered at a very young age. And I related that to back to when I was in school and I would get triggered um, way, way, way back in like first and second grade. That's um, that's amazing. I think that's something I've never bonded with in the ASMR community. I think um, ASMR Noir mentions this idea of uh, an early haircut he had or, or, or someone taking care of him. And I, the only recollection, I honestly, it was sort of a, an addictive thing initially ASMR because I had not had that amount of chills or tingles as they're called, you know, in a very long time. I remember, um, and there's a bonus uh, interview that we're doing coming out soon um, that I did. They were cut out. They were mentioned in the credits. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, I asked them, they're from England, and I asked them if they ever played the game where someone cracks an egg on your head. Oh my gosh, yes. I love that. That was one of my biggest ASMR so, triggers. They revealed to me that in England, that is very much not a thing. Um, that was the big scoop of the interview. And they thought I was so weird for asking if they, like, if someone pretends to smash an egg on your head and runs their hands down your back. That was the only time I could remember chills uh, as a kid. You know, I actually have thought about doing an ASMR role play like that, but I was thinking of having, like, the camera face, like, someone's back, and then I am doing that on a person and having them wear the microphones on, like, their back of their collar or something like that. But the game's only supposed to be like a minute, two minutes, so the video wouldn't be that long, I don't believe. Yeah, and it's interesting because I remember, you know, sort of running out of chills and doing that. That that it was sort of known you could only do it once or twice, and yeah. you'd have you'd have. To, and so I am amazed by ASMR um, at its ability to do that for a long time, and that's sort of where another big point of the opening comes in is. The lack of science, um, the huge, overwhelming uh, amount of anecdotal evidence and, and definitely real evidence of people getting chills from videos, it's, it, one, is, one is shocking, but you know, uh, not, not un, unsurprising. Um, did you have any thoughts on that and sort of, you know, from the get-go presenting the film as saying, you know, this is this term is kind of falsely scientific in a way. Yeah, and it's something that the internet made up. I mean, I don't believe in the term ASMR per se. It's something that if in a couple of years or so they discover like I say they, I should say like scientists or somebody discovers that this is actually another subject and they were like, We should be calling it this, not that, I would have no hesitation to stop stopping using the term ASMR because it's confusing, it's a little choppy, it's basically I mean, a fake science. If you if you analyze the word too, I don't know if we talked about it in the movie, but it, it means nothing. Yeah, it's essentially backwards as well. Yeah, right. It's 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 it, it, it I mean it really means like you feel like essentially you've heard something on your head, on, like not even on like Meridian, like no one uses that. Only racists doing that old racist science about the size of skulls do say the word Meridian to describe something on the head. So it's very strange. Yeah. And like when people ask me, I just say it's a neurological response because that's what I think it is. I don't know about them or scientists or what anybody else believes, but I definitely think it's just neurological, like response in the body it's unfortunate because when you look at the world of science i can you know tell you pretty easily that it won't be researched anytime soon simply because unless a grad student you know sort of takes or a phd person takes interest in it because there is you know there's no money in it evident at the moment even though you and i probably could say well is there is there no money is there you know is relaxation sort of pretty important and it could, isn't there something there but it's uh it's 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 a shame that there it probably will be a while off before we get any real answers yeah and like i am starting to notice a lot um i've read i believe it was um emma her name um, is whispers red on youtube she mm -hmm. went to an asmr spa and it's like a real spa where they 
give you like a scalp massage and they whisper from ear to ear and they really present to you like real life ASMR. However, I don't think those are going to be popularized anytime soon. I feel like that might be like a one-time opportunity to go to that sort of spa until there's actual research, until this becomes more of a mainstream, less of an internet trend sensation. You know, there's another, uh, that, that brings up a great point because um, a lot of people have success in sort of um, alternate, you know, spa therapy things by sort of claiming uh, something mythical. And it is mythical or mystical. You know, it is sort of nice to see that this is a, a trend of the modern age that people don't try and say, you know, you see the theme of, of Reiki and things like that used to create, a, you know, a, a, a type of video and crystals, but people do not claim that this, what's really in, like inspirational, honestly, to me is seeing young creators that are experiencing something strange, you know, a sensation that they're not, they're claiming it's science is a lot more gratifying to see rather than them claiming they have, you know, spiritual powers. Yeah, I completely agree. And it's a form of art as well. I mean, I personally have like learned how to do what I do all on my own. I mean, of course I use like YouTube and like how to like edit videos, but I started with like crap editing software and worked my way up. And it's really like I self-taught myself everything. And that's something that most people can't say. Like they, most people can't say, I know how to edit YouTube videos and, you know, along those lines. Most people don't understand the lefts and rights of a microphone or a camera. Yeah. Um, on a, so, Sort of on that note, but, but on a tangent, you know, uh, just before I forget it, I sort of think that there is something about it being a video art. And we're, we're, as you know, I don't know if this is, you know, I'm very impressed that you've learned to edit your own videos and, you know, stereo sound. I, I went to film school myself, and I think that there is a prejudice against ASMR because people assume that the movies they see in theaters are what is film. But the reality is that film is and even we shouldn't use film anymore if that's uh, evidence of this is video and moving images are the newest form of art and we don't know what it is yet so to dismiss asmr as something youtube or or not you know video art and art in itself is is not just you know wrong it's it's a total misunderstanding of the fact that Painting is thousands of years old. People know what painting is. You know, we don't really know what space film and video has in the art world. And, and I think that I've never seen anything more unique and enjoyable than ASMR videos. As far as I'm concerned, there's no story all the time or the story isn't essential, but, but it is 100% an art. Yeah, and especially I think it's homegrown for a lot of people. So I think a lot of people can relate to that because – there's a lot of members of the community who say, oh, I, I I personally say this as well, and I heard everyone in the documentary say this, they want to kind of give back to the ASMR community for what they've given to them. And I think that's very inviting and welcoming to people. They say like, oh, well, if this person who started with just recording with like their iPhone and their microphone on the iPhone can now have 700,000 subscribers or something along those lines, I can do it as well. It's inspiring and it really creates a sense of community and a sense of welcoming. Yeah, I, I don't know that I experience the need to give back, but I will say this is I rarely find myself in the, in, like, uh, in the right or, or allowed to make commentary on a piece of media if I haven't tried it myself. And so for me, if I was going to make a movie about ASMR, even if it was, you know, however it would come out, I couldn't try it unless I tried to do ASMR. And I'm actually, you know, not only these interviews, but I'm releasing a video on YouTube so that I can have that personal clout to be able to say, like, I've tried to do it. Like, I'm going to put my neck out there. I don't want to be critical and, and not take some criticism myself. But people are very nice and coming from podcasting and film and comedy, I can tell you 
it is a unique characteristic of the ASMR community to be accepting and, and nice and people wanting to work together. It's very rare in an artistic community that you see a drive towards pleasantness. Yeah, and I think that sort of almost comes with the nature of ASMR being so calming is people like recognize like, hey, I know you understand that I understand that you're going through something. Let me see if I can help you along your way, because if you are going through something that I can't control and you can't control, let me at least do this one thing to help and maybe better your life a little bit. And I think that's sort of where I came from with ASMR as well. I just wanted to you know, other people. What, what, so what is your sort of origin with ASMR? So my personal one, or are you saying like how I discovered it? Um, well, I don't want to. I don't want to get too far off track. So for now, I want. I, the answer is I want both, Caitlin. But um, uh, just for now, how you got started into it? So I had always watched ASMR videos, and I was just fascinated by what this was, what this chemical in my brain was doing, and what was happening, and everything. So I thought to myself, you know. I think I have an okay voice. Why not? And I just sort of started using my phone and using the microphone on my phone and sort of using the small equipment that I had to just build a small gathering. And it started off as just like a hobby. And I never imagined it would be not a second job, but I mean, in theory, I put anywhere from eight plus hours into one video. Yeah, and what's what's fascinating too, again, about ASMR is that when you talk to other people and other, you know, I'm going to use podcasting as an example, but certainly documentary making is another one where you see people picking it up as a, a hobby. A lot of times those people doing that hobby are sort of harmful to the industry. Um, if someone, for example, makes a documentary as a hobby – they might try to employ uh, someone to make to help them make it at you know the wrong rates or too high of a rate, and they're sort of overplowing the field, as you will. But mm -hmm. um, with ASMR, seemingly the, the the path to doing it is just giving back and, and and creating these things and hoping you can help people, which creates a perfect economic model for, to not ruin you know there is no way to ruin it because the cream will float to the top and 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 that's it it's it's, it's actually pretty fascinating when you look at it that way yeah it, it really is and i mean i definitely think it's all just about giving back and i don't want to say it's like charity work but in like theory like you're really helping people get to sleep and I know personally, and I can only imagine that you and everybody else in this world has experienced what it's like not being able to sleep or waking up and not getting enough sleep. So for me to be able to help someone with something I struggle with so, so much, it's, it's amazing. So let's go back because I, I very much want to get through all your notes. So what else is on your, your list that we can talk about? So um, I started to have a bullet point under... Um, puddings category and I was talking about how like white noise and equipment is a very like, interesting part of the ASMR community and the evolution of it. I love the evolution of where it's like started and where it is now. Yeah, I don't, I think we were going to do a little bit of a thing on it, but I'm sort of as someone knowing a little bit about audio and knowing about video production a good amount, I am 100% fascinated by the 3DO mics, the, 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 the ones that look like they are yes. two ears. Um, it is a very strange, you know, when you look at the way that product is, was created and the reasons it was created initially for, for film and, and radio and things like this, it is, you know, it's fascinating to see that a lot of people buy it simply because it's a nice mic and they know they can rub on it. You know, an incredibly strange thing to think about from any microphone designer standpoint. Oh, yeah. And I mean, if you look at almost half the like items that people use for ASMR triggers, I mean, like for example, I use makeup brushes all the time in my ASMR videos because it's my personal favorite ASMR trigger. So I think to myself, like, I wonder when this person was designing this makeup brush, if they ever thought that someone would be brushing a microphone with it. <laughs> it 
it is it is very very strange in in all those ways because you probably could you know uh, 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 sell a good, you know, for someone like you, you probably could brand if you, you know, got an investment, uh, um, an, an ASMR specific uh, makeup brush. I mean, it's, it is for someone like you or Whispers Red or Heather Feather or Tony Bomboni who do a lot of makeup videos that are very popular. It's not inconceivable to think that all of their fans would want their makeup brush because i mean I, I i do makeup art but i would definitely buy one of yours or any of those asmr people's makeup brushes because that would that would make me very happy outside of even asmr that's oh that's so fascinating to think about like merchandising like the asmr community <laughs> and sp speaking of that while we're on the, the the topic of microphones and things like that you know um, I'm reminded of a story where uh, Pee Wee Herman, if you ever watched that show, uh, Pee Wee's Playhouse, there are no children guests on the show, which is strange for a children's show. And Pee Wee makes this point, and I think this is why I love Pee Wee so much, is that, or Paul Rubens makes the point. He says, I, I could not live with myself if uh, the magic of Pee Wee's Playhouse was ruined for even a single child that to ruin the magic of Pee Wee's Playhouse being a real place would ruin the whole place for him. You know, the idea that there's all these people and it's a set and their heads are shoved into things. And I think that when we're on the subject of tech, which I want to stay on because that was your main point, seeing people's setups and, and the idea of going and seeing someone do this live, for me, I love the fact that you, I mean, obviously you're a real person, and, and I respect you in those ways, but it is wonderful to think of you or your ASMR personality as living in the computer. You know, there's, there's an element to that where you exist solely inside of my computer in a way, or this personality does at the very least. Yeah, and I definitely can agree with that. It's like I've met people in like the ASMR community and even fans, and I'm like, oh, I saw your picture on Instagram this morning. Like, <laughs> I saw what you were doing an hour ago, and now you're in front of me. It's very interesting to see how social media can really like affect a person as like who they present themselves as, obviously, but that's a different subject. But when it comes back to like the tech root of it, we are essentially just profiles and people online at this point. But I, I love that. I think that ASMR is proving beyond a shadow of a doubt that there is a way to live in that world and, you know, be connected with people and not feel isolated, but, but, but quite the opposite. I think if anything, ASMR, I don't think, you know, we're at singularity levels, but it is giving hope to the idea that, in that world, you know, you would feel comfortable and it wouldn't feel hollow and, and dark um, because there is something, I mean, I think obviously you are not your ASMR personality. That would be a good thing to talk about after we talk about mics, but you know, that personality is so vivid and alive inside the world of ASMR that it, it, it begs to question whether would we feel that way about other famous movie characters like Don Corleone? If I saw Don Corleone in YouTube, I, I would not believe he was real. Uh, but the fictional personalities that ASMR creators create uh, are very real, even though they are very much not them. Yeah, and it's essentially like acting at that point. A lot of people have said like, oh, you're such a great actress. And I'm like, no, I'm not. Like if you saw me in real life, I can't even play like charades. I get really anxious and tense up. I can't do that sort of situation, but put me in front of a camera and I can do whatever. And, but you are a good actress or an actor, uh, depending on your, your, you know, you are a good, you are a good actor because it's it, to the idea that someone can stand. I've watched, you know, a good amount of your movies, the idea that even in 20 minutes, uh, you know, an actor can stay in in total character, pretty much off script, uh, is a very rare trait amongst actors. You know, it's it's not it's not really something that most people can do. Most actors can do. Most actors struggle with out having weeks and weeks of rehearsals to understand the character. So so it is it it, it is unique in that way. 
Yeah, it definitely is. I mean, there's possibilities are endless with like the ASMR videos and the topics that people come up with. And some there's a video I'm working on like editing right now. And I don't know if it's ever been done before and I haven't searched it yet because I honestly don't want to know if it's been done yet because I'm proud of what it is. I, I want to tell you that that is something very important to me as a filmmaker is that I almost never check to see if something is 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 there unless it's for, to research something as both of us being filmmakers i think it's important to have a vision follow through on it and make it your own you know no no you have to realize that you're a unique artist and that no video is ever going to be like your video because no video is your video and there's a lot of people that you know artists i know that spend their whole lives you know it's a very evolved way of thinking. They'll spend their whole lives trying to make this thing that's bleedingly unique. And if someone beats them to the punch, they become depressed or, or they can't, they don't want to finish it. And so I've never researched, you know, there are other ASMR documentaries, but I only really looked them up after I made this. And I knew that mine would be a, a, a catch because it would be an ASMR video itself. Yeah, and that's definitely what drew me in is when I first like loaded up the documentary, I honestly didn't know what to expect. And by having like the like volume very low, I was like, Oh, I can't hear anything. That's strange. This is my computer. And I'm like, Oh, I actually need my headphones for this. Like this is something that is presenting ASMR, but it's also being spoken like it's an ASMR video. I'm, gl I'm glad you like that a lot because it was a way that I knew if, if someone, cause you know, putting whispers, especially, uh, has his live streams, which you do some, do you, are, do you do, do you stream them live or is it like a chat? Well, like I've seen some of those for you too. Yeah. So I have done live streams and I have tried to make them like an ASMR style it lasts about like a half hour and then it just becomes overwhelming. Um, but I've also done some gaming on my, um, channel before, which was not ASMR whatsoever. It was not <laughs> very well whatsoever. And for people like you, I was very much worried that, you know, a fan of Putting Whispers would come on here and say, you know, oh, I've heard him give some of these answers before, um, which he is very open about his personal life, which is not, again, not something uh, widespread throughout the ASMR community. And, you know, my personality, I try to leave it off the screen um, for everything I do. But uh, it's, um, it, I knew that if it was an ASMR, people would watch it either way, ASMR fans, because they would know it would be ASMR. And I, I knew that was a way to pull them in. And if I'm going to be perfectly honest with you, I had to make myself a cup of tea so I could stay awake. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'll, I'll have to edit that. Um, yeah, that is a, a, a common issue that I we have been noticing uh, throughout people watching it is that uh, thankfully on my end, I'm very proud that I actually made an effective ASMR. Um, uh, on, on, you, let's go back to, we've been off shooting so much. So what else were your thoughts on microphones? Um. So you see, I don't personally love the 3DO, and I know that's more or less one of the most common microphones in the community. And it's not saying that like if I see it in a video, I'm immediately turning that video off. But if I see it, I'm not automatically drawn to that video. For me personally, I love a little bit of white noise. So I listened to a lot of ASMR videos that were uploaded three, four years ago before that microphone was well known in the community or before it possibly could have even been invented mm -hmm. i personally like like that as the community is now starting to call it the quote unquote back to basic style video when it's just raw audio with white noise but i do love a good binaural microphone just the 3do it's i don't know if i'm intimidated by it or what but there's something about it that i don't love and i feel like i'm one in a million saying that um, I will say that that is definitely the opinion of the ASMR community. But um, again, your instincts as a natural filmmaker are showing again because that microphone is not beloved by the film community. It is not beloved by the audio community. It is not even a popular microphone. It is the, uh, 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 you know, 
over expensive high end car of microphones that you know essentially a dealer will have it in their store just to show that they have access to every microphone. I know almost no filmmakers who are going to drop a thousand dollars on a microphone who are going to buy a 3DO. Um, and on that same note, I'll tell you another reason I think technologically you've hit on something important. I believe that there is a middle line of microphones that are markedly worse, especially for ASMR, than you know, it, it just using your phone or your computer. Because a big problem with something like a 3DO and then running into YouTube or a 3DO and running and, you know, upgrading in the wrong direction, even, you know, your snowballs and your, your Yetis, if you don't know how to use those microphones, the middle of the line microphones, the things that are, you know, a couple hundred dollars and not a, a you know, a thousand or so, um, you're going to make worse audio because if, it's two components. It's not just that the mic is good, but if you have technology built into that mic like the 3DO does, if you don't you know the software to make that mic work well, it's going to sound much worse than a phone which has tons of software in it to just make audio sound naturally good. So I think you're 100% onto something. And that is, I'm glad we got to talk about it because I was planning on doing a whole thing on the 3DO and about how from the perspective of the film world, it is a way overpriced microphone that almost does nothing for the world of film. It's, it was designed in this thinking that you could have a, a character of natural perspective on sound without editing anything, that you, would, that you would stage your movie like a play and that the microphone would be by the main characters and that outside characters would not need to be edited as the extras came in and delivered one or two lines. It's very strange that it's become popular. Yeah. And I, I just, I look at the price tag on it and I'm like, can I justify that? And I can't, I can't justify. I mean, the lower end model, I believe is $600, which again, lower end, still not that great uh, price wise. The microphone I use, it's less than $300. And then audacity, audacity is free. <laughs> Right. And you would have to, if I'm being honest with people, I don't know about people's setups, but quite frankly, if you buy a 3DO and you're not using Pro Tools, if you don't have a live mixer so that you can make sure that the levels are not just tuned, but something that I don't think a lot of people know about, like tuned to your voice and the type of audio you're trying to get out of it, which is you know, where you're really going to get the richest sound. You're going to get weird compression. You're going to get, you know, strange file formats. You're going to hear noises just incorrectly. So you're, you're, you're right that the price does not go up $600 or $300 from your mic to this mic. It goes up 2000 or more because you should be changing the way you do videos and the setup of, you know, you're going to have to make more videos to justify it. It's, 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 a, it's a big purchase. Yeah, and it's not it's a commitment um, essentially and it's not something I love. No, and 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 quite frankly, it's it's I know we are both we're both very comfortable with it. I wish one of us was sort of a more ASMR head that one of us would be like, "No, the 3DO is amazing." But quite frankly, uh, you know, I I I I'm hoping people will say the opposite. I know that it has its pleasures in you know, as hearing something very well done in stereo, the transitions are, are a lot better. And, and that for people that value personal attention, which I don't, which we also didn't touch on in the movie, um, I know that is very important to them is hyper realistic uh, stereo um, because the 3DO will transition sort of your position in the room, which, which is, is the big feature of it. Yeah, and like I, I'm looking at my notes going over ASMR Noir. He was even saying that he doesn't use any fancy technology whatsoever. And I loved that and I appreciated that so much. It was something that you don't really see often or ever anymore. And I love when ASMR um, members post the quote, back to basic style videos. And I know myself, I even done it because my microphone wasn't live. And I was like, well, I'm not going to get rid of the video entirely. It's something that I can use. 
the 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 big misconception about and i don't want to sound like i'm the biggest sound expert but i i do know about you know making sound work on a budget very well the biggest misconception about sound is that micro microphones and software are the most essential because what what is the most essential especially once you get past a certain level of microphone is um knowing how to use the type of microphone you have and setting up an environment that works for that microphone you know when we're in an asmr situation you can use any mic because asmr is the laboratory version of uh sound is that you can set up the perfect scenario to use almost any microphone um the phone on your the microphone on your iphone is the same as pretty much it's just differently it's different conformed magnet wise in terms of how to capture sound but it is the same as the quality as the lav mics the pin mics that they use on television it's of a very high quality and even going to like video and like visual the iphone can now shoot 4k if i am correct if i remember correctly i i have no idea you know a lot of times uh, uh, we're going to get into very nitty gritty of, of 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 tech stuff but a lot of times 4k can be uh, uh thrown around as sort of a a buzzword that is not really true yeah. about 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 what's going on um 4k is sometimes used it's like natural like you can sort of use it however but I'll, quickly i'll say 4k is sometimes used to express uh pixel by pixel information like in other words the resolution of 4000 by 3000 but uh in reality 4k represents uh a much greater amount of information capture but the 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 point that you're making is yeah your iphone is a better camera than the cameras i bought when i first started making movies you know nine years ago that were just as expensive and didn't make phone calls and didn't do pretty much everything everything you could do almost your entire web presence on your phone at this point and 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 have a, a, a pretty solid you know youtube page and maybe maybe even a podcast uh you know it's it's a it's amazing what what they can do and i think another reason that the inventive people of asmr often come to the top that you rarely see an asmr video that isn't getting the hits it deserves yeah and i often find that there's so many members of this community where i'm looking at their subscriber count and i'm like whoa like why do you only have x amount and i know it's quality over quantity but at the same time i almost think credit is due in so many different channels subscription boxes oh yeah a hundred percent it's 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 not to say that this happens overnight or that it's from, not from hard work it is definitely from hard work you know that they get this amount of subscribers it it, it is it is truly amazing i mean you you yourself are, are are nothing to to blink at either um it's it's it is very impressive what people manage to do and what you've managed to do you know uh, youtube is incredibly difficult to understand in terms of attracting viewers yeah and i mean you see so many times like clickbait being used on the internet and there's so much clickbait on youtube alone that it's almost difficult to sort of figure out what exactly is quality and what is just clickbait and even in the asmr community there are i don't want to say like community members who are doing clickbait for every video but you do see it yeah i will i i you know again let's i think we'll come back to your notes in a second but the perspective of of women you know in this is is super important because i think that we touch briefly on it later but you know everyone on the internet that is popular you know puts on makeup they everyone puts you know gets on an outfit they know makes them look good um but i think that this topic comes up so much with even though it shouldn't be even discussed there is this pall over the idea that a woman is scantily clad on the internet and that you know even though men are also you know wearing tight fitting shirts or 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 
you know, enhancing their attractive features. But there is this focus on it in ASMR where now it becomes a sexual thing rather than the fact that everyone on the internet, every single big video you see, it's mostly, it's good looking people or it's people that are camera ready and they're looking their best. But somehow the, the stigma of ASMR that all of us, all of a sudden it's, it's as soon as a woman is at all attractive in their video, it's, oh, this is a sex thing. I mean, I mean, how does that make you feel as a woman creator? I mean, it's very intimidating. Honestly, there are so many times when I've gotten either it's comments or emails and they're just downright creepy. And it's like, I almost don't want to do it because of the creepy factor that comes with it. But at the same time, it almost empowers you a little bit to be like, well, you know what? If I look my best, if I am presenting myself this way, it just shows the confidence that someone can have. And the whole, like stigma thing is there are so many men in the ASMR community who are allowed to do like shirtless ASMR videos and it's like you know getting ready working out like personal trainer like bathtub like something along those lines whereas if I was to do it it would be like an age-restricted video immediately and that comes down to a whole nother like stigma and whatnot with women but in the whole like terminology of ASMR there's so much that can be blurred, in my opinion, when I know you touched base upon it in the documentary, but the terminology itself, like role play, brain orgasm, there's so much that's just, people can, like, people automatically assume it's sexual. Yeah, I think that's a big mistake. And, and, and uh, again, there, there, you know, unfortunately, that is where ASMR does fit in with other internet communities where they are so stingent on this idea that you have to use the word role play. They are so stingent on using brain orgasm. They're so stingent on using these words that uh, uh, it's, it's almost inconsiderate to the women creators to not say like, you know, because a, a, a woman in a bikini is a very common thing in comedy videos you know the 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 scantily clad woman that comes in as a character on comedy videos on the internet is a trope at this point but they are not getting age restricted and you're totally right that the low someone wearing a low-cut shirt at all or in a in a training bra which would not be unnormal at a gym it does become a, a thing of whether or not you know that's so crappy that people have to worry if their video is going to be age restricted uh, it, 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 it could use a rebrand, and but I think mostly it's because people don't know enough about it. And I almost feel as if, like, I had this discussion the other day with somebody, like, there isn't a really other terms that could be used. I mean, brain orgasm, yes, there's a whole thousand different adjectives that could be used for that. But role play, I mean, you are performing a role and you are kind of, you know, acting a scene out. I mean, it wouldn't be like typical internet clickbait if it was like, ASMR like go to the movies with your friend like action or like you know go to the movies like presentation like the words don't flow therefore I understand 100% why the word role play it has and is being used but it's a very blurry line for someone who doesn't experience ASMR and just sees this video that says the word role play in it with a cute girl it's 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 tough because I don't, I don't, I think you're right that I don't know what you do. The example that I thought of this week as well, and because I, I have been thinking about it leading up to our talk, um, you know, one of the ones I think of all the time is the the name for the uh, cuts that are made in violins and cellos and violas is called an F hole. Now, <laughs> from from yeah, exactly from my perspective, change that name, but. You know, it's what they've been using for a very long time. It's only recently funny. And uh, I think that ASMR is experiencing this because they're such a modern and quick culture that the idea that this this too shall pass, you know, uh, that eventually people will ignore it. It's a tough line to, to say is that the internet is, is generally saying nowadays, like, no, if you don't, if you don't change people, people won't know, you know, uh, 
Yeah. And it's almost, it's very unforgiving as well. I mean, the, the comments that I've received, and I know other women have received about the quote unquote, like role playing, like, they immediately can take it and be like, oh, well, I'd like you to role play with me. And it's like, um, not funny. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it is not, you know, I'm, I don't want to brag, but it's, it's definitely, that is as being an internet personality, that is something that's not, you know, that doesn't only happen to, to women. Uh, I'm not saying it's an issue. It is, oh, yeah. but I will say they are getting it so much, you know, it, it has happened to me where all of a sudden someone, because I'm, you know, interacting with them online, which nine times out of 10 is perfectly pleasant, you know, one out of 10 times, someone will think like, there's an interest there when of course there, there isn't. It's just, I, I like people engaging in my art. Um, but I will say, you don't hear horror stories from men. You know, I watched a video just the other day from, I'm trying to remember the ASMR artist that it was, but she was doing videos with um, friends of hers, which is incredibly difficult uh, considering how the genre is made. And she came on her channel and said, yeah, my friend stopped doing it with me because the comments were too harsh. Yeah. And it's, it's sometimes very tough to like block out what people say. I mean, I know like I personally get every single phone notification, I mean, every single notification sent to my phone. So even when I'm at work, it'll say like, you know, so-and-so commented on your video. I get the troll comments to my phone right in front of me. And I do that on purpose. So it gives me something to A, laugh at, but B, to kind of grow off of. And you have to filter it out. Like it's a person hiding behind a computer screen when they're like, oh, you this, that, and the other thing. Or like someone the other day commented on my eyebrows and they're like, oh, they didn't look that good that day. And I'm like, uh, yeah, it was three in the morning when I filmed my video and I put my makeup on at 9 a.m. Sorry, that's like 20 something hours of makeup on my face. You know, it's, it's a double-edged sword with a lot of these, again, the analogy of how many people have been able to have access to filmmaking and how many people have had access to podcasting and ASMR, the double-edged sword of all of this is that um, it is sort of the public forum of art that everyone's say gets counted, even though that might not be fair or true or wise. You, you know, we're, we're hitting on that theme pretty hard today. The, the 3DO, the idea that someone is commenting on your eyebrows out of one out of like 90 videos that, you, you know, it's, it's like, you're lucky I do my eyebrows at all, buddy. And, and so it, it is, it is, again, I mean, that's a, a sort of, it is nice in a way to hear that there are still, maybe they're more well-intentioned, but that we sort of present ASMR as this flawless community in the movie. And so your commentary helps to add that, no, it's still an internet community. People are still jerks. Oh yeah. And I mean, just because it's, you know, a very welcoming community doesn't mean that some of the people who do view it aren't just rude. <laughs> and I, I'm not saying that I have rude subscribers. I'm not saying that anybody who watches is rude. However, there are trolls. And I know that the ASMR community faces a lot of trolls because it's a taboo subject. People don't understand what it is. So the trolls find those taboo videos and especially find like the role play ones and they just comment willy nilly everything and anything. And it's, it's horrifying. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's kind it's, it's sad because I know what I, I know the experience that person wants. I even know the internet experience that person wants, you know, we've all been there where something is so bad and so horrible that it is fun to make fun of, but it's a shame because that person isn't actually having that. Instead, they're just looking, you know, kind of foolish in front of everyone else. And there's no way to, they're going to get the same response that the other experience has where they're going to say, you know, oh, they, these fans of it, they're so dumb, they don't get it. But in reality, it is one of the rare situations where truly the troll is the one that, that, that looks very, very foolish that they, they don't get that 
they, they're the one looking spectacularly silly because these other people are just here to relax. It would be like going to a spa and heckling people. <laughs> yeah, they can't experience what everyone else is, so no one can have fun. Yeah, and it's, it's sad because it's not about debating a movie or debating a film or a radio program. It is simply that everyone is trying to relax and, you, and you're shouting stupid stuff. Yeah, they, people just want to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I am interested. I, I don't think he's doing one this week, or if you do one next time, I see people comment on the, on the live streams, and I've been a little bit self-conscious because I would think that more talking during an ASMR would sort of even, how do you, you know, calmly comment, you know, as I made a tweet about it today when I tweeted at you when we were going to start, you know, how can I be excited loudly? You know, we're excited quietly. You know, it's 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 difficult. Um, yeah. Let's let's go back to your notes for a second because I do. We're getting closer to the end, and I want to get through everything you have to say. So um, let's see. I'm going to skim through ASMR Noir. Oh, so this is something I was really excited about. Um, he talked about how Good Mythical Morning had a um, bit on ASMR, and how that was how he discovered what ASMR was. And for me, that was so exciting because I didn't see that bit until like maybe three months ago. And I've been a member of the community for like four years. So for me, having someone find ASMR through a comedy morning show, I loved that so much. And I love the culture that ASMR is bringing to the internet and how it's becoming very mainstream. You know, I think that ASMR people themselves are very funny, and I think they probably should, if one of the moves is to start doing their own humor and doing funny stuff together, because I think mostly what uh, comedy things are doing with ASMR is just making fun of of ASMR. And I haven't seen his, the one that he was referring to, but... Um, it, it it does seem like mostly it's the same joke with a lot of these comedy things where it's they're just making fun of how you know what's a silly situation that could be ASMR but i think if the ASMR community took the time to have fun reactionary culture um it could educate people that this is not a one trick pony kind of trend because I, I don't think it is yeah, I completely agree with that. And um, there's, I don't know if you've heard of them. I know some people listening may have um, Game Grumps. They're my favorite comedy um, duo and they are my absolute favorite YouTube channel. And they often will, they speak very closely to these microphones and they'll often like bump them or they'll make like a weird audio blip. And they constantly are making like audio jokes. And sometimes they'll whisper very softly and they're like, oh wow, we've got some ASMR going on in here. And oftentimes they like genuinely talk about it and there's one video where they talk about it for i would say like upwards of like five minutes in a 10 minute video it's more than half of this video and these men are just video gamers they're just playing a video game and they're talking about asmr and they start talking about who they've watched and who they like and they know these names and they have three million subscribers and for the community to be able to reach people not of that status because it's not like they're like you know a-list celebrities but to reach quote unquote internet famous people it's fascinating that it's getting to that point and that's where it has like a trickle down effect where people can learn about it where people can say like oh well i don't know what asmr is but they've been talking about it for 10 minutes i should probably figure out what they're talking about it has an effect on people I, I also do take a, a lot of, you know, I'm very happy when I hear celebrities I like talking about ASMR in their, in their podcasts or things like that. My brother, my brother and me are sort of noted uh, also serious ASMR fans. And it's, it's nice when someone talks about it in a genuine way, which I think is really important to something be holding on the internet. Yeah, I 100% agree. And it's something that it's almost magical and it's almost something that like I like to keep sort of in the community like when people who are like famous or have like a celebrity status or even like people I know personally like are like 
oh my god i was on youtube and i found your video i'm a little like no 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 please like don't this is like I, we want to keep this in the closet like we don't want to talk about it like i want to keep it underground but i'm so interested in the future of it oh uh, you know that's that's it's it's so hard to know because i think it's definitely past where an internet trend would be but it's very much you know gaining speed so it, it, it's it's interesting to see what what the future is going to be of it before i'm going to get into a hole in terms of the future of asmr but let's let's keep going through your notes before we, we talk about jerry at the end here well i'm thinking um of actually talking about jerry i have a part of what he said that was really interesting to me so he said he's very open about talking about asmr and he talked to like a coworker about it and you know, they bounce sort of things off of each other and she didn't understand it per se, but she also didn't knock it. She respected it enough. And I find that that's something that personally, as someone who creates ASMR videos struggles with, I don't like talking about it because it's still this taboo internet trend. And I think in my personal life, I have a handful of friends who know about it two or three family members who know about it and I have never even told my best friend about it that's how secretive I am about it but it's something that when Jerry was talking about it he was just so open and telling a co-worker like god forbid if I told a co-worker they'd be streaming my videos laughing about it behind my back I I assume I I, I mean I I don't think they they would be you know there's also the idea of like controlling the things people people say about you. You know, I I talk about it a little in it. I have friends to this day that don't believe I don't watch it as as a sexual thing. They have a hard time understanding what it is and how and how it helps me, you know, to sleep or relax or focus. Um, but I. I, you know, I've seen your videos. They're 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 really you know they're really great, and I I think that, um, you know, I I'm not going to tell you to go out and tell all your coworkers and have like a coming out party for doing ASMR, but I I think that, you know, um, it, it is difficult to 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 speak about, especially because it's so niche. Yeah, it really is. It's something that people, I have to almost just immediately equate it to, you know who Bob Ross is? That's 99% of the time, the first thing I say to people, like, you know who Bob Ross is, right? And then they're like, yeah, and they start to give you this like kind of concerned brow. And I say like, imagine what he does, but I do that on the internet, but differently. <laughs> You know, one of the things that isn't always talked about with Bob Ross is that he's actually had a very traumatic life, and oh, yeah. and and one hundred percent those videos are for him to to relax, um, and and I, I I I you know if again if you said that you made relaxation videos for people, it would go over better because ASMR does sound strange and it's such a foreign word I, th I i think that that's another big mistake is is i mean obviously it's what's making it unique and it's what makes this a community and it's what makes it interesting as a subject but at the same time if it was just called relaxation videos you might have better luck but at the same time it's not really relaxation videos is it yeah and like I, that's the whole thing is i'm like reading my notes while we're talking about this and like I feel like every single thing keeps coming back to the blurred line that is the elephant in the room of the ASMR community. I mean, saying like the whole role play thing and the brain orgasm, like that's an entirely different subject. But to the like line of discussing it and calling it relaxation videos, I mean, some people don't watch it to relax. Some people just watch it to sleep. Some people only watch it to relax. There's a line where it's like, you can't cater to everybody. However, it's really tough to just cater to the people you know who are in that immediate conversation with you, who you know personally. Yeah, and it's it's interesting because in reality, the way ASMR is pitched is more like a drug. And it would be hard to explain to someone 
what drinking was if they'd never heard of drinking alcohol or if they didn't grow up in a culture where the ideas of the effects and social situations of alcohol were understood inherently. So it is difficult to, you know, when we talk about ASMR, it's audio for a physical effect. It, and when you have something that is only taken in, you know, at its base, the chemical reaction happening is you take this in, this physical effect happens. It is hard to make someone understand the entire cultural significance of taking that drug in one sentence or without them experiencing it. Yeah, and I often find that people who don't experience ASMR don't quite get what it is exactly, but a lot of people are very open-minded about it. And I know personally, like I was very intimidated to tell my grandmother about it and like um, we like live with her. So oftentimes I need the house to be like, you know, silent. And if she's up and about, I have to be like, oh, I just need you to be quiet. And it was awkward trying to explain to her like why, but then once I explained it to her, she was like, oh, I get that when people, someone plays with my hair and saying, presenting that same topic to someone else who doesn't experience ASMR, like, oh, you know, when someone plays with your hair and they get, you get the chills and they just respond like with a no, I don't get that. It's a hard pitch to say to someone like, this is what it is. Like you might not get it. Cause a lot of people are like, well, it's not real if I don't get it. And it's like, but some people do. And like those people who do get it can attest for it. Yeah, the idea of some people not getting tingles, you know, there's a through line in this movie about the idea that, and in each of the ASMR people say it, um, and I'm surprised it doesn't come up in this, but all three of these creators believe in their heart that um, there is a sound for everyone, that you have not experienced ASMR because you haven't found the right sound. And that was a very interesting through line, this idea of the sound for you. Um, that that came up a, a few times um and it's an interesting theory but again until we know more of the science it, it's it's uh it's hard to know whether that's true and i definitely um we they touched upon you guys touched upon this when discussing with jerry how different forms of media can present itself with asmr and i know for a fact that i get asmr from music all the time and that was such a weird one to me. I'd never heard that until this this documentary. See, for me personally, I when I travel, like I was traveling this past summer and it took, I think, like, I don't know, like, I think it was like five different plane rides and I was exhausted on every single one of them and I didn't have internet connection. So I didn't know what I was going to fall asleep to. I didn't plan ahead very well. So I just put on my favorite album that I knew would create ASMR to basically replace what asmr is to my sleep routine and it worked that's 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 amazing before i forget you know i am shocked that more you know obviously the older community isn't as into youtube but it is given what asmr usually comes from given that idea of the parental feeling that a lot of people like in asmr that caregiver feeling i am shocked to not see more um older senior citizens or older creators making asmr because naturally as you get older your voice gets lower you become quieter because it takes a lot of energy to talk you know loudly you, you your your voice often becomes gravelier from from years and years of talking and and you know they move a little slower. It seems almost natural that we'd see older creators. I would, I would love to watch a, a, I think, and a lot of people probably would love to watch a, a video starring uh, an older creator. I think it's just the, the nature of the genre that it isn't out there. And I have seen like, what I say a handful, I mean like very few um, members who are like older who do do that because of their like grandchildren they are like asmr like uh, makers so they're inspired and it's few and far between but i've also seen a small influx of children making asmr videos 
And I can't say too much about it, but I work at a school with children and oftentimes kids like love to just like play with your hair. And so many times, even today, I had a girl braid my hair today and I was getting so relaxed and I was getting tingles and I'm sitting there like, oh my God, don't fall asleep. Like you can't, you're at, you're at work right now. Um, I, I, I'm So the interview that isn't in here is, um, is a 19 year old uh boy and his sister started a, a video and so that that interview isn't in here but you know youtube is always taken on by creators and for every uh genre there is always a, a phenom from from you know who knows how to use the internet the right way and comes out as being one of the younger creators and it's it's amazing to to see that and it is you know a child's voice is also another natural there's not a lot they have to do to, to create ASMR, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a natural way to be another, uh, if you've ever, have you ever read the, the, uh, Narnia series, the Chronicle of Narnia series? I haven't read the whole series, but I have read, um, like Lion, the witch. There's a scene in, I'll forward you maybe if there's some info on it on Wikipedia, but, uh, for fans of Narnia, there's a, a scene in the silver chair where pretty much this witch does ASMR to make the, the kids fall asleep. And oh. it's, it's wonderful. Uh, it's, a, it's a great scene. Wow, that's very interesting. Um, see, I often find that like people, like I've, I've heard from people saying like, oh, like the visual ASMR of like reading, like people get that, you know, tired sensation from like using their eyes and, you know, reading. And that's one thing that, like, I, I don't understand. <laughs> well, book turning to page turning, I know, is a very common oh, yeah. ASMR one. What Have we gone through, have we, have we checked off all the notes? Have we ticked all the notes while we get towards the end here? Yeah, I'm towards the end of my notes. The only other thing, the last thing I wrote was really, like, what, like, how, um, when Jerry was talking about, like, radio voices and movies and something along those lines, how, like, people have like those sort of voices and like you touched base upon it today also like NPR like I find music to be that one for me and I know I mentioned it and there's a um, Lana Del Rey song and she has a poem before and after the video and the entire video I just it, it feels like I am just like a hundred percent in like complete relaxation mode it's some of the best day of smart I've ever gotten and it's a 10 minute music video and it's unbelievable <laughs> for someone to like say that, that I get ASMR from a Lana Del Rey music video, but I get ASMR from a lot of celebrities voices. And she's a celebrity that her voice just singing or talking immediately just puts me in this like melancholy state. Yeah. You know, and, and, and that, that, that comes into Jerry's thing too, because there is this mythical element to it where with the perfect sound, with the voice that triggers you with, you know, this sort of uh, what, what is a very long quest for this perfect noise that, that does take on mythical attributes uh, throughout, throughout time and history. Um, noises to kill, noises to heal, the, 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 the per, per, you know, we talk about, um, uh, harmonics there's a lot of crazy theories out there about using harmonics to change things and um it's then brought very much back down to earth because jerry talks very much about the business end of it which i was wondering how you felt about it as being someone that you know taught yourself these things that did it as a community thing how did you feel about hearing jerry say i work for a company that investigates YouTube as, as investments for videos. And so I decided to see if I could make something out of ASMR, you know, was that shocking to you to hear such a business side of it? It was honestly. And like listening to some of the things he was saying, like, I'm not saying like I was repulsed by it, but I was very taken like aback by it. And I was like, wow, like that's a perspective that I never looked at it like through. I don't have the business aspect of ASMR. I mean, aside from the small portion of like, YouTube money that you can make. I don't have that business mentality when it comes to ASMR, but to hear the whole, like, I'm trying to think of what he wrote. Oh, this is, this is something I took down. 
the copyrighted characters, like the role playing characters. I mean, I never even thought about that. And like, it's a, like, a, once again, a blurred line. And mm -hmm. he even was saying how, like, well, if you parody a character, it's one thing. But the ASMR community almost isn't parodying. They're no. really replicating these characters. And I personally haven't had, like, much of a scare with the copyright uh, rules on YouTube and even the new ones that they've just implemented. But I can only imagine that it might be something that the community is going to face or it's something that might never really affect it it's gonna go one of two ways i think and i think it might almost be under like a parody sort of action you know it's it's amazing because i you know i knew what jerry did before we came on but i did not expect to get into sort of we very quickly become becomes a high level conversation uh, you know high level considering what we're talking about before that um conversation about copyright and you know that incident where the quote unquote i'm going to use it that way new rules of, of copyright um it comes up it came up about a week after jerry and i recorded and, and this is this was released about you know a week a week or two after that that happened the new rules but of course as as people in the industry have noticed and that YouTube has said, these are not new rules. And there are tons of communities on the web that are simply, you know, they're, they're, you know, wanted outlaws, essentially. They're being allowed to live. I don't know if you've ever heard the song uh, Poncho and Lefty by, by uh, 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 Willie Nelson, but it's about a cowboy who, you know, all of the, all of the federales in Mexico know that they can catch him, but they feel pity for him, and so they're they're letting him exist uh, just because they you know they can take him anytime they want to. And so, not that I don't think anyone's pitying ASMR, but there are a lot of illegal things in ASMR. There are a lot of illegal activities going on in Twitch, and at a certain point, at any point, someone could say, you know. Nope, that's ours. We no longer find it to be helping us promote. Take it down. And it's a big problem with YouTube is that there is these communities form up and people expect the same guidelines to be enforced. But of course, they can be enforced whenever they want, whoever it serves best. They're sort of being a little bit uh, standoffish that they're not saying anything until they get in trouble with YouTube. Um, you know, those videos that they required someone to take down, uh, they could have done that any time. The rules did not, the terms of service didn't change. Yeah, they just almost, they basically just started like, enforcing them a little bit more and a little bit more, and you're starting to see a pushback. 100%. Twitch is, is, is a really great example of this. Twitch is 100% illegal. Those are people's copyrighted characters. Those are people's copyrighted images. And you're, you're not really creating. And even if you're commentating over it, to say that you're always creating direct comments, you know, you need to have very, very, you know, you'll notice in this, I did not include a single clip from any of these creators from their channels because I would have to be talking extremely specifically to get away with that on the the real you know, video market world, because it is very specific, the rules as to why I can talk about it. Um, you know, Twitch is 100% illegal across the board. That's, those are pe other people's characters. There is a blurred line when you dress up like people, but I think you're right that it's either under the radar or people don't care or these companies that they're using characters from, you know, Funimation has a lot of dough. And it's hard, it would be hard for me to believe that they're going to go after your parody or your characters you're using for your ASMR. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's genuinely just a harmless reaction. I don't think people are, you know, maliciously trying to create these characters to profit off of them. And I think that's something that is either recognized or, like I said, they just don't care. Yeah. Um it it was it was good to get Jerry in here. He was he was a unique find in terms of business stuff. Do you 
do you did you expect yourself to get into to to be you know popular enough to monetize or anything like that when you started doing this? Not particularly. I mean, when I got the notification um, that I was able to monetize, I was like, "Wait, me really?" And like, you have to like send away for it, and it was very different, and it was something that I was. I wasn't expecting and to have to like file it on my taxes to get like mail from Google like it's interesting and it's not something that I expected I think I started monetizing when I was 18 so that was something that I had no clue what I was even talking about and even the term monetize I was like I don't even think I know I don't even think I can pronounce that <laughs> um but it is you do still you know most most uh, YouTube people have second jobs have you ever thought about getting a job aside from youtube in media i have thought about it um i actually this past year have been like toying with the idea of getting a job involving like media studies and um working for youtube or something along those lines or sort of something like jerry does working for a company that works with youtube or for youtube and it's something that i'm very fascinated in i mean this this social media website is growing so rapidly. And I mean, you log on day after day after day and it's just a different web page every single day. And that's what I love about YouTube. I haven't calculated it as it's, I would never be able to, but I realistically believe that I watch and have watched more YouTube than every, any television show, any movie, anything ever. Mm -hmm. you, you, you know one of the great things that's 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 happening is i'm that's definitely the way it is with me with podcasts too where it's there's so many we're, we're reaching a level of casual watching that we've never had before we've never ever ever had the ability to casually watch media the way we can do it now you know uh, uh, because it's this it's this level of media where it isn't necessarily worthless, but at the same time, I'm not going to cry if I miss 30 seconds of it. And that is in some way that being less precious becomes more prescient where it's, it's uh, everywhere. You know, you can just keep YouTube on your favorite channel all day. You know, as I said, your channel, putting whispers channel, ASM, ASMR noir, Jerry who has significantly less than the other people, but I just, in order to research the movie, just watched pretty much every video. I mean, just for a few days while I was working, all of those videos were on and during breaks I would watch them. But the idea that I could walk away and not be so upset to miss it, but still be really enjoying, you know, a video is, is incredibly strange. And I don't think I've ever been able to like sit down and watch a television show. I mean, yes, I have, but like, not like, not been able to take my eyes off of it whereas like with youtube it's like if i'm watching like a like a series or like a like a like i really watch gaming channels often if i'm never going to play this game but i can watch someone else play it watch their commentary on it and be able to essentially binge whenever i want this series i love that and i watch um as i've said game grumps so much where i've gone through some of their playlists that are over a hundred videos and I haven't even batted an eye at it. And they're all over 10 to 15, sometimes even 20 minutes. And it's like, Oh my God, thinking about that math, that's so much time I've spent watching these videos, but it's not, I'm not watching TV. I'm not watching movies. I'm solely interested in loving everything about YouTube. I think that is a great place to stop our commentary as the, the movie has also stopped. Cat, Cat, Caitlin, ASMR Kitten, this was absolutely wonderful to get to talk to you. I'm so happy we got to do this. Thank you so much again for, for doing this. Yeah, thank you for having me. This was such a treat. It, it, was, it, was, it was really great. I think, you, I think you brought the perspective we needed to sort of round out the whole documentary. And quite frankly... You know, as we were finishing and then you reached out, I am so happy because I don't, I haven't felt that the movie was finished until now because I feel like you have added exactly all the information someone needs to understand the whole, you know, ASMR as it is now.
Oh, well, thank you. I'm, I'm very happy to hear that. <laughs> um, let's quickly, because it is a podcast, um, where can people find your stuff? So I am all over the internet as ASMR Kitten. You can find me on YouTube on ASMR Kitten. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram. Just everywhere, ASMR Kitten. I am there. Uh, I don't, you know, I don't know if I've if I've missed this in yours, but why why Kitten? Um, my name has always been like cat. Like people have always called me like cat or kitten or something along those lines because they take it from Caitlin. So when I was coming up with ASMR Kitten, it was. Well, I can't do ASMR cat, so kitten. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm going to stop the broadcast right now.